Are monthly IRRs that much better than yearly IRRs? Well, Planys always does things monthly. And what we're going to do here is use a combination of Microsoft Excel and Planys to show you why monthly IRRs are always better than yearly, and you'd rather always use monthly if you can. First, we're going to switch into Microsoft Excel's help. And Excel has two kinds of IRRs. Here we have the IRR that's made for periodic cash flows that must occur in regular intervals. Or they also have the XIRR, which is what Planys matches, which is cash flows that are not necessarily periodic cash flows. This is really what commercial real estate is, is not periodic cash flows. Now in this Microsoft Help, if you go to Microsoft Help, Excel help and type in XRR, you can view this. Down at the bottom, it's going to list an example where they have the different dates and cash flows. Here we have January 98, March 98, October 98, February 15th, 99, April 1, 99. And if you put those dates in with these cash flows, you should come up with a return of 37.4859%. Now we've put these into Planny's cash flow analysis utility. Now, Planys usually looks at things you know, during the month, but you can actually put in each day if you want. And here we have the exact dates that were listed and the cash flows. And we come up with the same rate of return because Planys matches the XIRR in Excel and also Google Spreadsheets does the same thing. Now, let's switch into Excel and look at this. So here what we do is we put in those cash flows that were mentioned in the help. Here we have the January 198, March 198, October 30th, 98, February 15th, 99, and October 1st, 99 with those cash flows. And if you put in the XIRR, and to do that, you need to click Insert Function, and you would then choose the financial area and then choose XIRR. You can view more about that in Excel if you want to go further with that. But in essence, what it asks for is the, the values and the dates, and that's the trick, the dates. So when you do that, you take into account both the dates and the cash flow. And if you do that on these, you get the 37.4859, just like it says in the help. And that's the same one that you get in, in Planys. Now, what happens when we try to do the regular IRR, the periodic interval IRR with these cash flows? Well, you really can't do it because it just assumes everything's end of year or just takes the year and splits up in the months. Here we're going to look at it end of year. And um, when we double click on this IRR, it shows us the formula, but we're going to go to insert function so you can see that if we insert the function, it's just going to ask us only for the values, not the dates. It assumes that it happens at the end of the year or the end of the period. So here we have, we have to manipulate the numbers so that it fits in. First, we could do it completely wrong, which is just to take the same same values, and it's going to assume that each one of those values happens at the end of the year, and so it would be a four-year cash flow instead of a year and a half, and it would give you a rate of return of 11 and a half, which is obviously wrong. Now let's try to make it fit into, by manipulating the values, let's try to make it fit into the years. Well, we could subtract the, the March from the original and make it that we're only putting that much down in the beginning, and then add the, take the the October 30th and put that at the end of year one and then take these two numbers and move it to the end of year two and that will give us a rate of return when we just do these three of 24. So that doesn't work. It's not right. The other thing we could do is well we could leave the 10,000 and then move these two forward to be the end of year one and move these two forward to be the end of year two and that doesn't work. Well we can leave the 10,000 in the beginning and then we can move this one forward to the end of year one, this one to the end of year one, and this one back to the end of year one to give this high number, and then this one forward to the end of year two, and still that doesn't work. So we're trying to manipulate the values to fit the IRR rather than taking the IRR to fit the values. Finally, what we could do is just say, well, let's just say we put 10,000 down in the beginning and add up all the cash flows and put it just at the end of year one, and it's still not correct. Why? Because we were trying to manipulate the cash flows to fit the IRR rather than using the IRR and making it work with our cash flows. And that's what the XIRR does. At the end of each day, it looks to see if cash was collected. If it was, it discounts it back. So it's really an end of the day process. It literally uses the calculator. It goes back to 
January of 2011, if you look at how it says it calculates, it says it uses the, the calendar, literally, and it goes back to January 2000 of 1900, and that's day one, and each day has a date from then on. And then it, it, because it has the number of days after, it can use those days to use that for the discounting process. So it's actually an end of day process, so you can um, get the numbers, count the values, the, the day you collect it. It's, it's the most accurate way to do it, and it, it will fit the cash flows that you've collected. Now, Planes does things on a monthly basis, so when you import the cash flows, they're done on a monthly basis. So, And that's how real estate works is you collect money on a monthly basis. So even though it's an end-of-day process, because Planes collects money at the in the month, it's a monthly IRR when you're using Planes.